John chapter 5 verse 28 marvel not at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice prophesying the death of Jesus Christ and shall come forth and when he dies the graves are open they that they that have done good unto resurrection of life works that's not us we're under the blood these are Old Testament Saints that done good on the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation listen whether you're saved or lost whatever dispensation you are to follow you will be resurrected to those that obey God correctly you get life even if, you, even if you're in the Old Testament under the law you'll get life the Jews will get the land the new earth the Gentiles will get the new heavens I'm not gonna talk about New Jerusalem because we're not looking at Christians yet there's no bride there's no gospel the death burial and resurrection and those that disobey God as much as the time from Seth where it says Seth called upon the Lord Enoch was raptured unto the days of Noah when men did not seek God they will go are in hell will stand at the great white throne judgment and then go into the lake of fire I'm not gonna talk about the church age there is no church age yet and you find this one uh, let's see L -C. there's a reference in Daniel and I don't have that note here him no but there, Daniel speaks about these two resurrections of the dam and of the saved. lean on my own self lean of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge Jesus speaking I judge and my judgment is just because I seek my own I seek not my own will but the will of the Father which has sent me the judgment of Jesus Christ is based upon the Father the one that said I am holy that reference in Daniel is uh, 12 Daniel 12 2 he speaks about the same and the reason why I say Daniel because they'll run over there and see look in the end days we're all resurrected yeah when you read Revelation 20 all are resurrected your name if it's in the Lamb's book of life you you go you're saved you don't go to hell but that's not the Christians that is a whole other judgment outside a period called the church age there are people like Nebuchadnezzar who did get right his name is probably in the book. Dyrus's name is probably in the book. If they if they got right, they're not going to Lake of Fire. And other uh, Gentiles, uh, uh, what's that Syrian that, that had uh, the leprosy? Nam. Nam made possible. I don't know. See, I can't tell you are these people saved. Like I can't tell you who's been saved, but they did obey God. Lot. The Bible records he was just. His name will be in the book. Some people don't believe that, but it's in the book. Samson, even though he broke Samson? the Levitical law by eating the honey from well, the well, he, he's, carcass. He's, he's Jewish, so I'm looking at the Gentiles that are found in the Bible that obeyed God. JL, I don't know if she's Jewish or not. There are Gentiles it, un, that the law, even before the law, that are recorded in the Bible that obeyed God. They're going to burn in hell. Because, no, they did what God told them to do. Their conscience. Don't worry about the heathen in Africa. Worry about yourself. What you're going to do. What God has said for you to do. If God does not send the blood of Jesus Christ into an African nation or whatever nation you're thinking about, then they'll be judged upon their works, according to Romans. But let's talk about ourselves. Lean, uh, verse 31 if I be if I bear witness of myself my witness is not true now we're gonna get into a witness Jesus said if I come and speak of myself that doesn't do nothing that's what a lot of false prophets do that's what a lot of cult teachers do they come in their own name in their own doctrine in their own teachings 
Now, the charges in verse 18 that he himself has made himself to be God. Well, listen, if I said I'm God, and he did, and I'm just saying it, and I don't have no witness, I don't have no proof, then I'm a liar. He's not worried. You know how he doesn't deal with the Sabbath at all. There is another that bears witness of me. All right. Out of the Old Testament, out of the mouth of two, two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Well, let's look. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. All right. So we're talking about the witness of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Who can stand up in court and say, I'm a witness of Jesus Christ? It ain't the Jehovah Witnesses. They don't even proclaim Jesus as God. They're thrown out of this chapter. He says, I, I, ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. Look at that. John the Baptist will stand up and say, Jesus is the truth. Well, let's, let's, let's read what the scriptures say. Jesus is the Son of God. That's what he said. Jesus is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That's John the Baptist's witness. But I received not testimony from, from man. But these things I say that ye might be saved. The words that Jesus, there's the words again. There's the word for salvation. What I say unto you is for you to be saved. Not what I made a movie about. I got to say that because that's what it's all about today. What about John? He was a burning and shiny light. Remember John 1 started off, I am not that light. He was not that light. But he was a light. A lot of Christians go around, you know, let your light shine. We're lighthouses and all that. Yeah, but you're not the light. Sometimes with your sins, your light gets blocked. You get smut on the lens. You got to clean that smut. You got to put it under the blood of Jesus Christ to become that light again. He was a bright and he was a burning and shiny light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. John brought the light. But even John, you believe for a season. What does that mean? You didn't follow him all the way. He died out. He got tiring. His message wasn't in your hearts anymore. But guess what? John was that prophet in Isaiah 40. He was to bear witness of the light being a light. You know what a lighthouse does? It says, here, here's the harbor, here's a warning. And when you follow that, you know what you do is you come into the city where all the lights are. All right, John the Baptist is a witness. But I have a greater witness than that of John. Number two. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do to bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. All these miracles Jesus is doing are a witness to who Jesus is. Nobody else can do it. Answer this question according to only John's gospel. If you only had a gospel of John at hand, who has ever turned water into wine in 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds? Who has ever done that? Who has ever taken a, a man that has an infirmity, infirmity for 38 years and, okay, get up. Let's take, let's take the Gospel of John. Who's ever done that? Then what we've read so far in the Gospel of John only, that testifies to one thing. I am God. Who healed the nobleman's son? God did. Who's God? Jesus. Who did John the Baptist preach? Jesus. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, was said by John. John and the works that Jesus done says, Hi, people, I'm God. Now, go ask your Jehovah Witness, who don't proclaim that Jesus is God. Did Jesus do miracles? Yeah. Can you name one? Well, he, lepers, wander, want, whatever, whatever they name. That you just said that Jesus is God because Jesus said those works proclaim I'm God. Remember the whole section we went through? He told him I am God. All right, here's the witness. John the Baptist and my works. Next. The Father himself which has sent me hath borne witness of me. 
ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Well, that's kind of interesting because remember what happened to John when he baptized Jesus? Remember God spoke from heaven and, he, and the, the, dove, the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, like a dove? Remember that? No one ever saw that but John, according to Jesus. And yet my father testifies. I'm, he's me. He's my son. He's God. I'm God. John the Baptist, the works that Jesus does, and the Father says. There's a threefold witness. Man works in God. And ye have hid not his word, abiding in you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. For whom he has sent, for God so loved the world that he gave his own, look at that, him ye believe not. Who did God send? Who is the love of God? Jesus. What's he telling them? You haven't believed me. Well, hasn't he been saying that whosoever believes on me? Look at verse 24 of chapter 5. Verily, very say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, God that sent Jesus, has everlasting life. And ye have not his word, biding in you, wait a minute, G very, very, I say unto you, and ye have not his word, I say his word is God. Talking about belief. That's two verses that say that Jesus is telling you, I am the God, because what God spoke, I spoke. With John 1, 1, the, in the beginning was the word, and read it. You have to deny John the Baptist. You have to, de de to deny the miracles. You have to deny God. You have to deny the word to say that Jesus is not God. You are in big trouble. Because I would not want to walk up to God and say, you're a liar. And you're not going to walk up to God and say you're a liar. You're going to walk up to Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. Oh, who is God? So you will tell God he's a liar. Brother, I don't want to be in your shoes. Now watch this. We have John the Baptist. We have works. We have God the Father. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You have John the Baptist, you have the works, you have the Father, and you have the Scriptures. Go back and read Genesis to Second Chronicles, the order of the Jewish books in their Bible. And Jesus said, you go back and read Moses, the second Chronicles, and guess who you're going to read about? You're going to read about me. So he's telling these Jews here, he's speaking to in the temple. If you know your scriptures, oh, we know, we got the PhD. Then guess what? You ought to know who I am. You know, I open up the Bible and preach the Bible, not me, because in the Bible is Jesus Christ. So deny Jesus Christ is God, you deny the scriptures, so you carry a foreign Bible not known in the land of heaven. How do I know it's not the land of heaven, the Bible you have? Because you call it the New World Translation. Boom! You just identified yourself. That Bible you hold, you deny the word of God. Because I hold a King James Bible, which is against the American government, because Americans say, we'll have no king. We'll have a president. Well, I have a king. I have a Jewish king. Bible. James, somehow, however it works out, is for the Jewish name Jacob. Ye will not come to me that ye might have life. What do you do with that verse? I'm going to heaven, really. How do you get to heaven? Works. But it's not the answer. How do you get into heaven? I pray to beads. It's not the answer. How do you get into heaven? I shed blood. That's not the answer. 
I go to church. That's not the answer. I give money to. That's not the answer. Listen, when you deal with somebody and you say, hey, how are you saved? How are you getting to heaven? Ye will not have come to me that ye might have life. It's got to be Jesus Christ. If it's not Jesus Christ, that's not the answer. Jesus said we're going to do what we already did. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's telling these Jews in the temple, you don't believe the word. There's the people listening and watching to the ones who read the word and tell you what the word is every Saturday in temple, in synagogue. He's telling them, you have no idea what you're doing. Now you see why they're mad at him? Imagine if I went up to a television preacher and put them on the spot on the television about what the Bible really said. You think that guy's going to love me? Before all the audience. But I know you. Ooh. People who reject the word God says, I know you. You're not going to hide. That ye, not, that ye have not the love of God in you. Ooh. Jesus. Because look what 41. I receive not honor from men. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not the honor of men. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. And you'll get people. I'm a Christian. Really? What on earth are you mad about me preaching the Bible? You being mad because I'm screaming my head off. Quote in scripture says you are not saved. You are a liar. And you are in man, Adam, because you're not going to give God honor. I don't honor God as a man. I honor God as a son of God by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. My old nature is, man, I hate you, God. My flesh says I hate prayer. I hate the Bible. I'd rather do something else. The Spirit says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The flesh says, shut up. Adam says, no. In my flesh, I don't glorify God at all. In my flesh today, they said, let's get out of here. Come on. Let's take your wife out. Let's go, let's go have a good day. Spirit says, no, you stay. We'll take care of that stuff later. Just do what I tell you to do. And look at the works that happen. Watch. I am. Ooh. Jesus. You know what that is? That would hit the Jew hard. That, to you, that's not nothing. But when he says, I am. That's Moses in the in the burning bush. To say I am would be saying Jesus Christ's name as a cuss to a to a born again believing Christian. I am come in my Father's name, Jehovah. Is that what that is? How dare you come to say you're a Jehovah Witness when you don't acknowledge Jesus as God? Your organization, yourself, by this chapter says you are a liar. So walk up to Jehovah. Hey, you confess your sins of being a liar? Oh, no, I don't lie. Get out of here. And ye receive me not. Man, he put them down. Don't come to me with your beads. Don't come to me with your robes. Don't come to me with your high authority of who you are. You don't even want me. You already want to put them to death. Now watch this. If another shall come in my name, if, wait a minute, excuse me. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now that's a reference of Satan. But let me ask you a question, Christian. How many people do you know in the ministry in the world today have their own name attached to it? Come on, you you've heard of ministries where the first and last name just came into your head. And they will receive that person more than they will receive Christ. Don't believe me? I just had someone tell me this week that their pastor left their church and most of the church people left. They weren't serving God. They were serving the man. 
And I'm going to tell you, when a man puts his name in the ministry instead of Jesus Christ, What are you going to do with that verse? Have I not outstepped that verse? No. My email that people get mad at me is Jesus Christ Blessed Hope at gmail.com. I had to come up with my own name for Yahoo for this job, and my job gave me my name as their email address. They wouldn't let me choose one. But that's not the ministry. That's my job. So there are men's names. And some will think, I don't see anything wrong, but I don't see anything right. Some will think that Judas will come in his own name. But let me ask you a question. Isn't there something associated with the name of the Antichrist? Receiving his name on your forehead? Oh, look at that. Some people say, I worship Satan. Oh, really? How can ye believe, which receiveth honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God alone? Judgment. Friends and family are a hindrance. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom he trust. Now watch it. Now get this. you got to get this. Jesus is going to sit on the throne. Judge not, least you be judged, Jesus. For had you believed Moses, there's the top name of all the Jews. Man, that's the name above name under Abraham. There is Abraham, Moses, and the Pharisees. Ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So Jesus has said, when I judge you at the great white throne judgment, I'm going to open up the book of Moses and I'm going to condemn you out of the book of Moses. Now, isn't that a wonderful thing that these guys have read the law, they know the law, and the law is going to judge them. Christian, can I tell you something? A warning? You read your Bible? You know, every time you read your Bible, God will judge you by what you read. There's a place in the Bible, it's one of those places that I know it's in there, but it's not. It says, little too much. The much more you know, the much more you're going to be held judged about. I've got the Word of God, and I will be judged by the Word of God I've been preaching and teaching all these years. Much more somebody who hasn't read the Word of God. Because I've read the Word of God. Now they'll be judged because they could have had the Word of God and could have read it, but they didn't. But I will be judged because I've read the Word of God and I ought to know better. Listen, if I know poison ivy will give me a rash and an itch, and then I go back to that poison ivy patch with an empty cow mine lotion bottle and I get poison ivy again. I will be liable to be called stupid because I ought to know better. And when somebody hears that this plant is poison ivy, you stay away from it and they go into it. Well, you know, you were warned. It's not like somebody who walked into it blind. Now, if somebody walked into that patch blindfold, they had no idea, okay. These people studied the law. They studied the Old Testament, and they're going to be judged by it. If I open up my mouth too much, God's going to say, listen, I told you, I'm going to judge you for every idle word you've spoken. You know that place in the Bible. I know you don't know the chapter and the verse, but you know it's in there. So you better watch what your mouth says. But if you had believed not his writings, but if you believe not his right, they believed in his right. They studied Moses as the big king king of all. If you have not believed his writings, 
there are going to be some people going to be, hey, you held a Bible, but you didn't believe it. Yeah, you carried a Bible to church. You never read it. Yeah, you opened that Bible. You marked that Bible. You never lived it. How shall ye believe my word? There's that, when he, remember he was talking to Nicodemus, if I tell you earthly things, Moses wrote earthly things. He, worked, he wrote with a pen and ink. God wrote with him. If you cannot do what Moses told you to do, how are you going to do the heavenly things? By the way, Jesus disauthorized Moses as the writer of the Bible with complete inspiration that, hey, what Moses wrote was life. So when a man tells you the Bible, uh, tells you about the Bible, man wrote the Bible, and Jesus said, yeah, he did. Inspired to the fact is that that's life, life eternal. How's that one? Explain that one to, to, the, to me, please. Did you know that Jesus told you you can get saved just by the law of Moses? Let's see. One of the things that Moses wrote to us was that Abraham had a little conversation about his son. God shall provide himself a lamb. What did John say? Oh, so see, John is a witness. Now Moses is a witness. Where did John get that? He got it from Moses. Uh, so you see how this witnessing works? You see how the testimony works? John spoke of the word. Moses spoke of the word. And here's the living word right now speaking to you. And you don't even believe what I told you. How's that? Isn't that interesting? All right. So you go witnessing for Jesus. Okay. You don't do it without a Bible. You do it. Well, I'm not going to quote no scriptures or anything like that. That's dull. That's boring. Blah, 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 blah. What have we learned in five chapters of John so far? You need the word. I hear from most often from people, I let my life, my light shine before. What's Is that the word? Chapter and verse on your life, please. You know why you better hide that scripture in your heart? You Not only that you may not sin against God. What are you going to do when you are in a situation somewhere? And this situation has happened. It happened to John Bunyan. You're in a prison somewhere and you ain't got no Bible. You're called a witness. And the only witness you can do is do a Morse code system. And what's the Morse code system you're going to do? You, scripture that you memorized. If you don't have the word, what are you going to tell people about God? you got tradition and ceremonies and doodads and all that. Is that the word of God? Absolutely not. Look what religions will tell you. Look what all the religions tell you. And what they tell you is not found in the Bible. Jesus is standing in the temple with the religious people of his time that was an office ordained by God before Moses. Moses set up through God that Levitical priesthood. Look where we are right now. And Jesus is standing before them saying, you are hypocrites. You don't even believe me, the word, and you read it and you have no idea what it says and it's talking to me. Faith. You see faith signs everywhere. I went to the store today. Faith signs. Where's the word? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And I turned around and I looked at some scriptural tea bag thing and couldn't even tell what Bible verses they were going to preach from. You've got to have the word. So God can't get the word out, can he? He's incapable of getting the word out. Explain to me, what was the Ethiopian reading in the chariot on the way home? 
Explain to me. A man in Italy wants and loves God with all his heart. An angel says, go get Peter. And Peter speaks words. Paul preaches and had no film or movies to show to the people. Show me a place in the book of Acts where they had fellowship to bring unsaved people to feed them. Oh, we're going to see that in John chapter 6. We're going to see the fellowship in John chapter 6. And we're going to see the people walk away unsaved, most of them. I want to stop right here because I want to try to pick up in chapter 6. But that's a long chapter. And that's, chapter 6 is on one particular subject. Let's feed the people and let's eat Jesus. Chapter 6 will be a fun chapter. And I don't think we can do it one night. So we're going to stop right there. We finish a chapter and half a chapter. And we're good where we are right now.